So if you come and stand with your feet hip distance, relax your arms by your sides. Just come to settle in your space and just start to sway forwards and backwards through the feet. So you feel the weight coming through the balls of the feet and then onto the heels. And then gradually allow that sway to get a little bit bigger. Don't lose your balance. And then just come to find stillness where you're equally weight bearing through the forefoot and the heel. Just check the knees are soft. Just once roll the shoulder blades back and down. And just gently draw your tailbone down towards your heels and start to engage through your deep tummy muscles. We're going to take a nice breath in as you send the arms up and place the fingertips behind the head. Shrug your shoulder blades up towards your ears, down towards your waist. Reach your fingertips to the ceiling and then lower them back down. Take a breath in. Hands behind the head. Shrug the shoulder blades up and down. Reach and lower. So just check you've still got that awareness through your core. It's so easy to start with that core connected and then forget about it once you start to add other things to your exercise. Shrug and then reach and then lower. Start to add a little bit of a chest lift. Allow your eyes to gaze up to the ceiling. Keeping that light traveling down of your tailbone towards the heels to protect your low back. Well done. You're going to make a fist with your hands and place your fists in the small of your back, just to the back of the pelvis. Lift the chest and find a nice back bend and then release. And at the same time, draw the shoulder blades down your back and give the elbows a little squeeze together. So we find a nice little chest stretch. So we're coming on and off there. So release. And if your back feels at all sore this evening, why don't you just gently massage the back with the knuckles or the thumbs and just see if that makes your back bending a little bit easier. If you don't have any back, any back pain, just gently encourage your hips forward, lift the chest and allow the eyes to gaze up to the ceiling. And just see how that feels through the low back, the mid back, and find some extension in the upper back. Okay, bring your arms down by your sides. If you cross your right foot behind you, try and get the sole of the foot so that it faces the side. Bring your right hand up and over, come into a side bend stretch, and then press your right hip out to the side. Reach your fingertips, and then allow your upper body to roll towards the mat and then roll up to the ceiling, and then come back to centre. Change leg, so the left leg crosses behind, the sole of the foot is facing the side, and then bring your left hand up and over. Find that lovely stretch and press your left hip out a little bit more to find increased length through the waist. Allow your upper body to roll forward, lift up to the ceiling, and then come back to centre. One more on each side. So the sole of the foot faces away from you. Hand comes up and over. And then push that right hip away. And stretch. Roll your upper body forward. If it feels comfortable, open up to the ceiling. And then come back to centre. Sole of the foot on the left facing the side of the room, hand over, press that left hip out, roll your upper body forward, open up to the ceiling, and then come back to centre. And allow your arms to swing left to right, just to loosen off your back and your waist. You can keep your eyes facing forward, or you can allow your eyes to look over your shoulder to the back of the room. And see if we can get a nice big fast swing so that you feel your hands hitting the backs of your pelvis each time. And then just slow that swing down so you find yourself facing the front again. And then bring your arms into an L shape. This time you're going to keep your hips still as you rotate. Inhale back. 
Shoulder blades down your back. Exhale as you rotate. Inhale. Exhaling. Inhaling. So keep your hips facing towards me. And now we're really isolating your rotation from the waist up to the thoracic spine. Work with your breath. One more each way. Okay, lovely. Bring the arms down and just take a wide stride. Turn the feet out slightly and squat down. Check your knees are in line with your feet. We're just going to take a side to side lunge. Start to find a light lift through the pelvic floor, draw the tummy muscles in. Just assess how those knees and hips are feeling. If you are feeling comfortable, feel free to go a little bit deeper, lean forward a little bit more and find that inner thigh stretch. Hold, and we're just gonna bend and straighten on one side, just a little dynamic stretch, warming up that inner thigh. Keep your chest lifted, shoulder blades down, but you are flexed forward at the hips. Come over to the other side. Find that stretch in the inner thigh. See if you can find distance between your ears and your shoulders. Come back to center, rotate so you're on the ball of the foot of the back. Just a little bit of a balance challenge in this position. Take your weight forward into your front leg and then just lower your heel and lift. So pressing through that flip-flop part of your foot between your big toe and your second toe as we lift and lower the heel, warming up the calf and the ankle. So you've got some weight coming into that front leg. Have that awareness through your core. Keep the heel down now and press into your heel of your front leg. And just bend and straighten your front leg. Challenge your balance a bit. Take the arms out wide if you're unsteady. Otherwise, keep the hands on the hips. If your front knee is feeling comfortable, feel free to take a deeper lunge and fire up those hamstrings and glutes. Okay, come back to the front. Rotate so you're on the ball of the foot of the back leg. Some weight's coming into the front leg and we're going to lower and lift the heel on the back leg. Find a bit of a calf stretch as you lower the heel and then engage the calf as you push into that flip-flop area. Make sure you're pressing through that big toe, second toe joint. Warm up that ankle, that calf. And then this time you're going to keep the heel down, maintain the stretch and then just bend and straighten the front leg. Push into the heel as you straighten the leg to activate the glutes on that side. And as you warm up that knee, if it feels comfortable, come a bit deeper into your lunge. Fire up those hamstrings and glutes on that side. A couple more. And then turn, face yourselves to the front and just heel toe walk your feet. Just place your fingertips down the back and kick your heels towards your bottom. So see if we can stop the knees coming forward. Keep the knees pressing back as you kick your heels to your bottom. It feels quite different. You'll fire up your hamstrings a lot more and perhaps get a little stretch through the front of the thighs. If you let the knees come forward you don't get either of those sensations. So try and keep the knees back. See if you can touch your heel to your hands. Lovely, so hopefully warmed up. Uh, we'll do a little bit of upper body work, not too much. We're only gonna do one set of the exercises, um, but teach you how to use your bands if you're unsure what to do with them. So if you have a band, grab that. If you have only got some weights, that's fine. You can do the same thing with the weights. Can you, if you've got a band, 
just wrap the band around your hands so that your hands are hip distance. If you've got weights, have you got a scarf or something? You might be better for this one rather than weights. You've got a scarf or a towel. That's it, John. Yeah, perfect, Jonathan. So we're going to do a pull down to start off with. So you send your hands up to the ceiling, you pull out wide, draw your shoulder blades down and imagine you're pulling yourself up to a bar. So you've grabbed hold of a bar above your head and you're lifting yourself up to lift yourself up towards the bar. I'm going to challenge your balance at the same time. So I'm going to float your right leg into tabletop. Hold it there. And as you pull down, see if you can come into a hip twist. Inhale back. Exhale. You can always do a clam in this position. It's too much through your hip. Exhale, try and keep the knee in line with your hip joint. Feel those lats working, so you're pulling down from here. So you don't want the band too wide. You want your band just about shoulder height and then open. If your band's too wide, you won't feel those lats working. One more. Okay, so give that leg a shake change. So the band is up here, Julie, not standing on it. Reach your band up to the ceiling, pull down as you open the knee and close as you lift it back up to the ceiling. That's it. Keep your core engaged. Initiate the movement by starting with the shoulder blades down first and then imagine somebody's hands are underneath your elbows as you pull down. Breathe. Okay, a couple more. Keep those hips nice and still. Lovely. Pop that leg down and give the arms a shake. So we're going to stand on the band just with one foot. This is where you can grab your weights if you're using weights. Come into a lunge position, so step back with one leg and bend your front knee so your weight bearing through that front leg. Take the arms out to the side. If your band is very short, you could always do this in kneeling with one foot stepped forward. So you're only kneeling on one side. Step one foot forward and put your band underneath that front foot. Otherwise, we're in this lunge position. So if you press into the heel of your front foot, just to get some glutes work as you're sending your arms out to the side. So we're doing shoulder abduction. So we can take the band up quite quickly, hold it for a second, and then slowly lower. Take it up and slowly lower. So we're working the eccentric part, really, of the descent. We're working these muscles as they lengthen. Keep pressing into the heel of that front leg and hopefully you start to feel a bit of a burn in your front leg. So keep your weight forward. Well done, do one more. Okay, so change legs. So coming into a bit of a lunge in that front leg. This time you're gonna lean forward deliberately at the hips. So we're not rounding the spine. Keep the chest traveling forward and it's a similar sort of movement, taking the arms out to the side, but this time squeeze your shoulder blades together and feel the work more into the back of the shoulders between the shoulder blades and your back muscles working. Keep your weight into the heel of your front foot so you feel the glute working on your front leg now. So Liz, Liz if your, your band is too short, come into kneeling. You can work in kneeling, lean forward in that position and you can get your back muscles working. So you want to be flexed at the, at the hips. 
Okay, that's only if you've got a really short band. If you haven't got a short band, you can stay upright. Well done. Give those arms a little wiggle there. So I'm going to pop both feet into the band. And again, you can pop both knees on the band if your band is short. So stay kneeling if your band is short. Cross your band in front of you, handles in front of you, and you want your palms facing. Bend your knees, hinge forward at the hips, and take your elbows up towards the ceiling. So squeeze the shoulder blades together and down your back, and then pull on the bands, leading with the elbows. Now, if you want to work harder, you can do two things. You can step your feet further apart and or you can wrap your hands around the band to make it harder. If you want to make it easier, step your feet together or just have one foot in the band. So really feeling the work through the back. These muscles are your anti-gravity muscles. Okay, one more. Just release your band and uh, step off it. Just give the shoulders a little wiggle. And then you're going to place the band behind you or your weights, keep them in your hands. And then just wrap the band around your hands again to your feet, your hands are about the distance of your pelvis. You're going to stand, sorry, you're going to bend your knees, bring your chest forward, so we're in this inclined position, you flex forward at the hips, draw your shoulder blades back and down, lift your hands up towards the ceiling behind you and start to pulse. I'm going to try and target the backs of the shoulders and the triceps. So can you breathe in for five presses and then breathe out? Breathe in and breathe out. Take your weight into your left leg. Either come onto the ball of the toe of the right leg, of the right foot, or lift the right foot off completely. Keep lengthening your neck and your head away from your shoulders. Pulse those arms. Gentle pull on your band. Keep the elbows straight. Pop your right foot down and let's take your weight into your left foot. Either come on just to the ball of the foot on that right side, on the left side, or float the foot completely. Breathing in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five. So it's a nice way to combine some tricep strengthening with some balance work. So you can do this on a balance pad if you had, had a balance pad. Let's go back onto the left side. No resting yet. Come on, ladies and gents. Keep going. Breathing. Two, three, four. Change to the right. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And two, three, four, five. One more breath in. And breath out and give those arms a shake, well done. Okay, so coming back to stand on your band, both feet, biceps now, so we've worked the triceps nicely there, cross your band's handles over, and we're just gonna flex and extend the elbows. So when you flex and extend the elbows, just grip the tops of your arms into the front of your rib cage. So imagine you've got newspapers underneath both arms, we don't want to drop them. The palms are facing the ceiling. We're just taking the hands up towards the shoulders. Again, you can have your feet wider if you want to make the exercise harder. You can wrap the bands around your hands if you want to make it harder. Okay, so let's find your core. So gently drawing in through the pelvic floor, draw your deep tummy muscles in. Slight flexion in the knees, slight hinge forward at the hips. Keep your chest traveling forwards. Okay, let's just do the bottom half. 
So lower towards your thighs and then just lift halfway. Couple more. Okay, so now we're going to go from halfway to full towards your shoulders. So really work in your inner range biceps now. Small movement, small movement at the top of the range. Keep hugging your rib cage. Let's go back to a full movement all the way down, all the way up. Breathe. Couple more. Well done. Super, and give those arms a shake. Well done, so we can get rid of the bands. Keep a drink of water and then we're just gonna come down onto your mat. I'm going to start on your side, underneath legs bent, top leg is straight, you're going to push the floor away and feel your shoulder blade gliding down towards your waist, reach your top hand up to the ceiling and float your hips, find yourself in a side bend position, from here we're going to lift that top hip up to the ceiling and then just allow gravity to drop it back down to the floor. So the effort and the focus is on your lift. Keep your top hand in line with your underneath shoulder and elbow. Reach your toes and your head in opposite directions. So you're in a nice long straight line from your toes to your head. Hold your side bend if you can, rest at any point. Lift and lower your top leg. Keep your core engaged. Is your head in line with the rest of your pelvis, waist, rib cage, or is it dropped? Try and keep your head in line. Can we hold the leg lifted now and kick it forwards and backwards? So we're really challenging your underneath glutes and waist and shoulder. Okay, can we keep going? Circles backwards. Big circles. Keep going. Forwards. Non emotional. And relax down. Well done. Whew. Hard work. Let's go on to the other side. Elbow underneath your shoulder. Extend your top leg away. Reach your top hand up to the ceiling. Let's come into your side bend. Focus on that lift of the top hip up to the ceiling. And just let gravity do its job, lowering the hips back down to the floor. Hold, lift and lower that top leg. Get far more emotional on this side. Can we keep that top leg lifted? Kick forwards and backwards. Strong, straight leg. Your shoulder blades down, those lats will help you. Last one, circles. This side fatigues a lot quicker, I'm afraid, because you've already worked it. Okay, 
endurance and the other way nearly there and hold and release well done give those shoulders a little wiggle a little circle and then come and find your pillow towel whatever you're using pop your hands behind you have your feet hip distance and slowly roll down onto your mat, keeping the weight equal between the left and right sides of your pelvis. Find length through your spine as you roll down through your low back, your chest, and then allow your head to find the pillow. Just check that the pillow is just at the top of the head so you can find length through the neck. Relax your arms by your sides. Just check your feet are parallel, your feet are hip distance. Check your pelvic neutral, so your pubic bone and your hip bones are parallel to the mat. You have a small gap between your low back and the mat. You are weight bearing through your rib cage, bottom and top, and then a small gap between the mat and your neck. Find that light lift from your back passage to your pubic bone, your pelvic floor. Find that light drawing in from your pubic bone to your belly button. Bring your right leg into tabletop, Brace your tummy muscles and float your left leg into tabletop. Keep your upper body nice and relaxed. Tap the toes onto the mat on the right side and then left side. I'd like you to come back to double tabletop each time. So we're just starting off nice and slowly. And I want your focus to be on the back of your rib cage and your low back. So as your toes lower to the floor, is there any lift away from the mat? in that area. If there is, you need to engage the core a bit more. Keep the weight bearing the same through the back of the head, back of the chest, back of the pelvis. Make sure the toes and the knees are traveling forwards, opening up the fronts of the hips. You're not just flicking your heels towards your bottom. Perhaps reach your fingertips up to the ceiling. Allow your shoulder blades to melt down to the floor as we come into double time. So breathe in for two toe taps, breathe out for two toe taps. And can you relax through the hip joints and the thighs and let the control come from the front, your abdominal area, as we toe tap. So nice, easy, low level scissors. Although, when you do this for a period of time, it's endurance and gradually you start to feel the work build up into your upper abs and your lower abs. Okay, let's do another five, four, three, two, and one. Come back to double tabletop. Lower your left foot, lower your right foot. Arms out by your sides, bring your knees and feet together and just loosen off the tummy muscles and the low back by rolling the knees side to side. Okay, so we're not going to have too long a break. You're going to bring the knees so they're pointing up to the ceiling, feet hip distance again. Arms by your side, relax your upper body, bring your right leg into tabletop, brace your tummy muscles, check your core. Bring your left leg to tabletop. This time you're going to exhale your right leg away on the diagonal, inhale back. Exhale the left leg away, inhale back. Exhale away, inhale back. So again, now we've got a longer lever, you're extending your leg. So it should feel more challenging through your core, preventing any arching and lifting away of your rib cage and your low back. So you need to engage those tummy muscles more strongly. Can you keep the fronts of the hips nice and relaxed and let your lower abs do the work? Breathe. If you want to work a little bit harder, reduce the stability through the upper body by reaching your fingertips up to the ceiling. And then start to come into double time. So exhale for two, inhale for two. Can you relax your head, neck and chest? Find the work in those tummy muscles. Find the work through the thighs as your legs fully extend. 
Please feel free to come back to double tabletop and put one foot down at a time when you want to rest. Try not to put both feet down at the same time. Okay, so let's come back to double tabletop. Pop the left foot down, the right foot down, arms wide, feet and knees together and just rotate side to side. So take it upon yourselves to take your breaks when you need to. Come back to centre, feet hip distance. This time we're going to place the hands behind the head. Elbows slightly forward on the diagonal. And without lifting or moving anything, I just want you to send your shoulder blades down towards your waist and then release. So in this position, feel the muscles, your lower trapezius muscles, perhaps your lats a little bit. Engaging as you encourage your shoulder blades down towards your low back. Okay, now this time, send the shoulder blades down towards your waist and lift your head, neck and chest and see if you can feel those muscles helping you lift your upper back off the mat. We're trying to come up high enough so that you find the tips of your shoulder blades. Now just look at your pelvis as you come up and just check that your pelvis is still in its neutral position and that your low back has not flattened towards the mat. Can you find that light lift through your pelvic floor? Work with your breath, exhale to come up, inhale to lower. We're going to hold this next one. Keep your shoulder blades down away from your ears and just give your knees a little wiggle in and out to make sure that you're nice and released through your hip joints. Just let your knees wiggle. Now can from, you, from here, can you press the bottom of your breastbone down a little bit more? Check you've still got that gap between your low back and the mat. Check you're not over gripping through your hip flexors and that hold is coming from your tummy muscles. Can you draw in those deep tummy muscles from left to right, right to left? Belly button to pubic bone. Lower your head down onto the mat and relax your arms out to the side. So we're going to combine those exercises together. So sending your shoulder blades down, bring your elbows slightly forward in a V. Lift your neck and chest. Bring your right leg into tabletop. Brace your tummy muscles, bring your left leg into tabletop. Tap the toes on the right side, left side. Back to double tabletop each time, starting off slowly. Work with your breath, exhale, inhale. So really challenging your upper abs now. They have shortened, keeping you up off your shoulder blades. Come into double time. So we make sure that the thighs are traveling away from us and that you're not just flicking your heels towards your bottom. You can reach your toes ever so slightly forward a little bit more to really engage those lower abs. So we're keeping that bottom of the, the rib cage pressing down onto the mat and the lower abs are controlling the descent of your legs each time you tap the mat to so the toes to the mat keep your upper body can you wriggle your shoulder blades up and down just check your shoulders are nice and relaxed your head's nice and relaxed come back to double tabletop lower your head neck and chest lower your left leg lower your right leg arms by your sides feet and knees together Roll left to right. Okay, one leg stretch, feet hip distance, hands behind the head, elbows in a V shape. Shoulder blades down your back, lift your head, neck and chest. Right leg tabletop, left leg tabletop. Exhale your right leg, inhale back. Exhale left leg, inhale back. And just check your opposite leg is staying in tabletop as you reach it away. One more on the left and then come into double time. Exhaling for two, inhaling for two.
Rest if you need to, if you're happy to keep going. Let's do another five, four, three, two, and one. Bring the legs back to double tabletop, lower the right leg, left leg and upper body. And just bring the knees together and stretch. So this nice hip twist is good for stretching out the abs as well as just loosening, loosening off the low back. Okay, roll onto your sides, come up into four point kneeling. Check your knees are in line with your hips and hands underneath your shoulders. I'm gonna push the floor away and press the back of the head and neck to the ceiling. So just find a nice little cow first by tucking the hips under, allowing your head to drop towards the floor. See if you can stretch your low back by pressing the low back up to the ceiling and really scooping in those deep tummy muscles. And then keeping the hands where they are, pull the hands towards your knees to bring your chest forward, shoulder blades down your back, your eyes gaze forward. And then roll through the hips, through the low back, mid back, upper back. Stretch that low back by pressing the low back to the ceiling. And then this time as you come through, find your neutral through your pelvis. So your pubic bone and hip bones are parallel to the mat. So you should have a little curve in your low back. Shoulder blades down your back. Can you extend your left leg so that your leg is parallel to the floor? And your pelvis at 90 degrees is parallel to the floor. Press your left hand into the floor and extend your right arm. Draw your right shoulder blade down to meet that left glute. Tap the fingertips and toes down to the floor and lift. So nice straight arm, straight leg. And feel the back muscles working. So focus on the lift of the hand and the heel, keeping the shoulder blade drawing down to the opposite glute. See if you can really find the work through the back of the spine, those anti-gravity muscles. Option to put your hand down at any time and just focus on the leg. If you can, keep the hand and the foot so they're parallel to the floor now. And send them out in the opposite direction. So the hand moves out to the right, the leg moves out to the left. Try and keep the thigh parallel to the floor. Keep pushing strongly away with your standing hand. Length in the back of your neck parallel chest and pelvis. Pop your right hand down, bend your knee to 90 degrees and flex your foot. Push your left heel to the ceiling. So your challenge is to try and keep your knee at 90 degrees and push the ceiling away. Just a little pulse, really engaging the glutes on that side. So can you get your heel in line with your knee and press up to the ceiling? So try not to straighten the leg. Keep your heel closer towards your bottom. Push away with both hands. Pop that knee down, knees wide, feet together. Bottom back to heels and stretch back. Take a couple of nice deep breaths here. And then come back onto your hands and knees. Finding your neutral through your pelvis, through your chest, shoulder blades, neck and head. Press the back of your head to the ceiling. Extend your right leg. Press strongly into your right hand and extend your left arm. Left shoulder blade glides down towards your right glute. Toes and fingertips tap and lift. So again, focus on the back of the body and see if you can find that connection from your left shoulder blade to your right glute. Lightly engaging your core. Keep that back leg nice and strong and straight. And then hold this next one. Option to put the hand down if you wish. Just take the hand and the foot out to the side in opposite directions. So they're on a diagonal. A 
and then place your left hand down, bend your right knee and pull the toes up towards you. Push the heel away for your donkey kick. You're pushing the heel directly up towards the ceiling on a vertical, not on a diagonal. So make sure that heel's pressing up. Okay, let's do three, two, one, hold. Knees wide, sit back and stretch forward. Grab yourselves a drink. Come and sit on your bottom, your legs out in front. So just remove your flesh. So you're on your sitting bones. See if you can find those sitting bones. Pull the toes up towards you. You want your feet hip distance and extend your arms. Connect your shoulder blades behind you so you feel you're lifting your chest and keep the chin tucked in. Can you tuck your hips under as you start to roll back? Pressing down through the back of the coccyx, nice and slowly, the back of the pelvis. Find your low back and then the back of your rib cage and then your head. Take a breath in, exhale, reach your fingertips forward, lift your shoulder blades, press your low back into the mat and then peel your spine off one vertebra at a time and come back into your upright position. If you've got a band there and you're struggling to get down and up, please feel free to hook the band around your feet and it can help control your descent and can help coming up even easier. You can also use your weights. So it may sound um, a bit strange, but if you've got weights in your hand, it actually makes the coming back up a lot easier as well. So if you're struggling to come back up. So I'd like you to work really slowly, focus on the coccyx region, then the back of the sacrum. And see if you can just pause there before you place your low back. Really tuck your hips under. See if you can get your low back down onto the mat. Hold it there. Can you press that low back down into the mat before your rib cage lowers down? You can send your arms overhead if you've got the space. I've got a sofa in the way. Inhale, exhale nice and slowly. Head, shoulder blades. Imprint your low back into the mat. Tuck your hips under and use your tummy muscles to come up. So inhaling here, exhale, roll down. Nice and slowly, one vertebra at a time. Take a breath in as you bring your hands back over your head, ready to exhale up. Grow nice and tall at the top here. Keep your shoulder blades connected behind you. Exhale down. Hands over your head. Modify this as much as you need to. You can bend the knees if your hamstrings are tight. Inhale up. So let's slow it down, exhale, back of the pelvis, low back before the rib cage, rib cage then shoulder blades, and then reversing, lift the head, lift the shoulder blades, lift, peel the rib cage off, low back stays down and then you lift through the low back and then the pelvis and come up nice and tall, well done. So let's come down and hover here, see if we can just touch the low back to the mat and then come back up. Touch the low back and then come back up. So this is really lovely lower abdominal work. Your low abs help to flex your low back. If you get any pain and your low back doesn't like it, don't do it. Nice and controlled. Breathe. And then let's come all the way down. Relax your arms and bring your heels towards your bottom for your shoulder bridge. See if you can just reach your fingertips towards your heels. Doesn't matter if you can't. And just check that your knees are in line with your hips. Remove any pillows behind your head for your shoulder bridge and send your hips up to the ceiling. We're gonna hold it here. Just relax through your upper body 
and just check that you're weight bearing through your big toes, the medial border of your feet, as well as the outside border of your feet. Lift your heel on the right, lift the forefoot on the left, and then change. So heel to toe, left to right, And then now you've got that movement going, what are your hips doing? Have your hips gradually sunk towards the mat. Can we keep weight going down through your shoulder blades? Softening the rib cage. So we're mobilizing your ankles, working your shin muscles front and back. So you should feel the shin muscles at the front and the calves at the back. Check your weight bearing through the big toe again and you're not rolling out to the outer borders of your feet. If you find that you're slowly heel toe walking your heels away, feel free to just draw them back underneath again. Okay, reach your arms above your head, hold your shoulder bridge now, keep your feet flat and just allow your arms to relax overhead. Really tuck your hips under as we come down, nice and slowly. So try and get the back of your rib cage down first. Really tuck those hips under. See if you can get the ribs down and then the low back and then the pelvis. Bring the arms back and place them down by your sides. Press into your feet again and send the hips up. Hold your shoulder bridge. Relax, check your weight bearing through the medial border of your feet as well as the outer border. And we're going to come into some hip dips. So drop your left hip. So when you drop your left hip, you feel your left glute relax. And then squeeze your left glute to lift it so it's parallel with the right. Drop your right side and lift. Left side and lift. And just continue to hip dip left to right, appreciating that one side has to relax and then engage. Check your weight bearing through the medial border of your feet. You haven't rolled those knees out. So release and clench, release and clench. Keeping your hips high. Bring your hips back to parallel, reach your arms over your head. Roll down, stretching out through the low back, tucking those hips under as you come down one vertebra at a time. Feel free at any point to hug the knees towards your chest and just circle the knees out wide so you get a bit of an inner thigh stretch if you're feeling the work building up into your inner thighs. And then place your feet back down. So we're gonna draw some circles of, with one leg. You can either have the knee bent or you can reach the toes up to the ceiling. So lift the hips up to the ceiling Float your right leg into tabletop. So you can either keep your knee here or you can extend your leg up towards the ceiling. And we're gonna draw five big circles in one direction, either with a bent knee or with your toes. Once you've drawn five nice big circles, circle back the other way. Keep pressing strongly into your standing leg. If this doesn't suit you, you can practice just transferring your weight from one side to the other. Bring your knee back to tabletop and pop that foot down. Extend the other leg. Either keep it into tabletop or reach the toes up to the ceiling. So drawing five nice big circles in one direction. And then drawing some nice big circles in the other direction. Keep pressing into your standing leg. And then bring that leg to tabletop, put the foot down, arms overhead, rolling down one vertebra at a time. Really reach your fingertips in the opposite direction, peeling down through the upper back, mid back, low back. And then bring your heels and uh, knees in towards your chest. And just draw some nice little circles through your knees. So coming onto your fronts now. Come onto your forearms. Option to stay on the knees if you want to do a half elbow plank or tuck your toes under for a full elbow plank. 
Elbows are underneath the shoulders and push the floor away. Lengthen the back of the neck and float your hips. If you're coming into a full elbow plank, tuck your toes under and lift your right foot, sorry, lift your right knee, lift your left knee. You're going to take your weight into your left leg and tap your right foot out to the side and then bring it back to centre. Left foot out to the side, bring it back to centre. Tap right, tap left. Tap right, tap left. Right and left. So this is our fifth one. Please feel free to have a rest now. If we can, let's do another five. And four, three, two, last one. Drop your knees down one at a time, lower your hips, and sit back into a shell stretch. So press your bottom back towards your heels, reach your fingertips forward, keeping your right buttock down towards your right heel, walk your hands to the left and stretch out through the right side of the body. If you can place your right hand on top of your left hand, just to give you a slightly bigger stretch there. So feel that length through the right side of your waist. Let's take a nice deep breath here and see if we can expand the intercostals between your ribs on that right hand side. And then walk your hands back to centre. Keep your left heel down onto uh, your left buttock down onto your heel, and then walk your hands to the right and place your left hand on top of your right hand, stretching through the left side of the body. And really breathe into that left side. See if you can find space between the ribs. Then bring your hands back to centre. Come onto your hands and knees and step your left foot forward. Feel free to modify this and do it in standing if you need to. Can you find enough uh, space to put your hands down in front or to the side of the inside of your left foot? You can tuck your toes under on that back leg and lift that back knee if you wish, or you can keep the knee down. Press into your right hand and extend your left hand up to the ceiling. If you find this is too much into your shoulder, place your hand on your chest and just rotate the chest and reach with the elbow. If you find that helps get a little bit more rotation, then extend the arm. Take some nice deep breaths here. your left hand down, pop your right knee down, step back with the right foot and then bring the, sorry, step back with the left foot and bring the right foot forward. Place your hands to the inside of your right foot, tuck the toes under if you wish and then lift that back knee. Press your weight into your left hand and extend your right hand, either hand on chest to open up to the ceiling or reach the hand up. Keep your shoulders down away from your ears. Let your hips gently melt towards the mat to find that hip flexor stretch. Take a nice deep breath in. And then exhale, put your hand down, drop your knee. Come back onto both knees and roll onto your back. Pop a pillow behind your head or towel. So you're welcome to use your band if you wish for your hamstring stretch. If you've got one of these resistance bands with handles, I quite like to put my foot into both handles and then extend my leg up to the ceiling. Just relax your upper body and find that nice stretch down the back of the leg. If you haven't got a resistance band, just hold on to the back of the calf. 
So can we point and flex the foot? And as you pull the toes towards you, just feel that sort of more nervy sort of sensation. Just appreciate that. Can we pull the leg a little bit closer? Get a slightly stronger stretch now. And then let's change legs. So we place the handles on the other foot, extend the right leg away, and then reach the foot up to the ceiling. Walk your hands up the band so we find a nice stretch. Then the back of the leg, and then pointing and flexing. Focus on the flexing, the pulling the toes up towards you. Feel that more neural, nervy sensation down the back of your legs. Couple more. Pull the legs slightly closer towards you if you can. And then take the band off your foot. Bend your knees, bring your heels towards your bottom. Cross your right leg over your left leg. And let that right knee drop out to the side. Bring your left thigh towards you and take hold of either the back of the thigh We'll see if you can hold on to just uh, on top of the knee. Just allow your body to rock left and right. And as your legs go across your body, you'll find a, a slightly greater stretch. So hold that greater stretch if that feels comfortable. And then pop that foot down. Pop the right foot down, then cross the left leg over. Just let that left knee drop out to the side. And then bring your right thigh towards you. Either take hold of below the knee or on top of the knee, just on the shin. And then again, just allow your knees to rock left to right. And notice as you take the legs across your body, you find a greater stretch. So find that greater stretch and hold it there. Okay, pop your right foot down, uncross your left leg. Slowly roll onto your side. And then come onto the balls of the feet. Lift the hips up to the ceiling and just let your upper body hang. Draw your deep tummy muscles in and uncurl one vertebra at a time. Reach your right hand up to the ceiling and then reach your fingertips down between your shoulder blades. Extend your left arm out to the side and wrap your left hand behind you and interlace your fingers behind you. If you wish to step back with that right foot, just find a bit of a calf stretch there. Just check that your hips are square. Keep your hips tucked under and find a little lift through your chest if that feels comfortable as well. So make sure it feels okay on your neck. If you want a greater stretch in that calf, just wiggle your front foot forward and take a slightly deeper lunge into that front leg. Release your arms, step back. Reach your left hand up and then down between your shoulder blades, right hand out and then wrap it around to find your fingertips on the other side. Use a band if you need. Step your left foot back. Find that stretch into your left calf and lunge forward into your front knee, your front leg. Keep your chest lifted. Make sure your neck feels comfortable.
Well done, everybody. Release your arms, step your feet back so that the hips are hit, your feet are hip distance. Take a nice breath in, float the arms up. Exhaling down, inhaling up. And down. One more nice breath in. And relax the arms by your side. Lovely, well done everybody. Thank you for joining me.